I just started recording. Oh, fun. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to episode two of He's Wrong, She's Right, and I Can't Stop Moving podcast. And you can't stop <laughs> moving? I meant physically, my body. Hmm. It's the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast for the ADHD those, that, in you. those that skipped him spinning my ring. I've got my, my fidget ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other fidget toy I'm not allowed to play with oh on stream. Oh, my God. So don't look. It's rated R. <laughs> Anyways, that was a great intro. Welcome back. Thank you for tolerating us for a second episode. It's I am tolerating. <laughs> I, a great way to put it. I am the host of the least, Andrew. This is the host with the most, Nona. <laughs> I'll try to look at the camera more this time. I can't stop looking at my wife. I'm sorry. It's, it's, if that offends anybody, that's her problem, not mine. <laughs> but if you pay me, I'll look at the camera more. Ooh, nice. Ooh, yeah. You know what? We didn't tell anybody about our businesses in the first episode. It was a very big missed opportunity. You get to go first. If you would like to see pictures of Nona, go to nonaphelps.com. Or you can also get an insurance quote. But there happen to be pictures of her there. For all of North Carolina and South <laughs> Carolina. And Florida. Okay. Other places too, if you back hard enough. If you'll if you'll pay for her license, she'll gladly get licensed. That's not in your how state. that works. See? Don't stay tell in, them don't tell them that. Lane. Don't tell them that. That's how we get stay that's how we get donations. Lane. That's not how that works. It can be how that works if we have enough money. Oh my goodness. So anyways, welcome back. Um, today is the same day as the first episode. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that a lot. We're going to record several episodes in a day. Maybe one day we'll do live stream. We need a thousand subscribers on YouTube before I'll do a live stream. Okay. okay. If you guys help us hit a thousand subscribers, it's not a huge goal. If you help us hit a thousand subscribers... And he'll wear one of my dresses while he's doing it. There you go. Which means she will never be able to wear it again. That is correct. So it has to be her best one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> For those that are listening rather than watching, Nona has a big mouth and she was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are listening, you'll just have to imagine. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. There's no way to convey convey somebody's physical appearance. I'm not very descriptive. I make up my own words most of the time. I don't I don't follow English. Con- yeah, I don't follow English conventions. I just make up my own words for everything, and everybody just kind of gets it. So you know they're effective. They're effective. <laughs> so um, yeah, nonaphelps.com. For all of your homeowners, property, car, motorcycle, boat, business. Is business back on the books? Mm -hmm. Back on the books. Business. Business back on the books. Um, For those of you who don't know, she is an insurance broker, which means that she works with a little bit of everybody. So if you're getting screwed over by, say, USAA, which seems to be a common trend on Twitter and Reddit, uh, reach out. She'll get you squared away. Absolutely. Um, and on that note, if you want to kind of take things into your own hands, call your auto manufacturer and tell them to delete all of your data and to stop tracking you. That's step one. Whether or not they actually honor it, who fucking knows? But you can start there, record the call. That way you have that evidence in the future for uh, pending and upcoming lawsuits. Um, we can talk about that some other time. Mm-hmm. You can also, if you have a vehicle that has like OnStar, um, Ford, whatever, I think it's like Ford Blue. It used to be something else. It was like Ford Connect or something like that. Via, anyways, if you have a vehicle that has integrated GPS, even if you don't use it, call, have them stop using it because you're probably using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay anyways. Um, and then also just physically disconnect the fucking module. Just don't let your car phone home. Because they are using that information 
to sell to the agencies who are using that information to increase your rates based on your driving habits. Even if you don't have one of those little OBD2 port things connected. It is Progressive's fault that this is happening, by the way, because they patented that thing. That's why. Interdusting. Yeah. So the the other companies were just like, well, okay, well, rather than telling our customers that they can plug this thing into their car, we're just going to buy their information anyways. Fuck them. Nona's just over here nodding her head for the uh, audio audience. <laughs> yeah, she'll, uh, she'll, she'll try and take care of you. Can't promise anything, but... Can't promise anything. More than likely, you'll get a better rate. Um, she does earn commissions, so we should disclaim that. However, she doesn't actually try to fuck you over. That is correct. She'll try and give you a policy that fits your needs. Um, and then for me, I'm a web developer and web host. I have my own network. I am a Google Cloud partner. I, yeah, I do, I do a lot of things. Um, expert enough, as I said in the pilot episode, not an episode one pilot episode, two different episodes. Jack of all trades. Master of none. Yeah. Expert Googler, um, as in typing in the Google search, <laughs> not employee of Google. Um, though I am, like I said, I'm a partner, so I should disclose that. Um, they don't pay me anything. I just get a cut of what I sell. Effectively, I just get a discount and then they charge, I charge full price. And then what about our nonprofit? Oh uh, yeah. Check out Veteran Wiki, veteranwiki.org. It is a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, intended to essentially be the Wikipedia of veteran-owned, veteran-operated, veteran-connected, anything. Businesses, projects, could be your book, could be your movie, could be your business, could be the your nonprofit. Um, it is completely objective. We are not doing any sort of rating and reviews. It is purely informational. Um, if you're not on there, there is a uh, form that you can fill out to submit your information, s3.veteranwiki.org. Um, that will move to the main site eventually to veteranwiki.org. The wiki itself is wiki.veteranwiki.org. These will all be linked in the comments, so you don't have to try and keep up with my Midwest speak. Midwest speak. I don't think I've ever heard you say that. I don't know. You you people talk really slow. And you I, people. Yeah. And I talk medium fast, but enough that people say that I'm talking fast. Just process the words faster. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <clears throat> so if you're looking for website, apps, integrations, hosting, if you have a project of your own already and you don't want to pay the prices, um, it's pretty much what I specialize in. Don't really like going into too much detail because I feel like if I say that mine's the best or mine's this or mine's that, then everybody's going to be like, oh, well, let's go poke holes in it. So... Um, yeah, Google Workspace, Google Cloud, those are my forte, a little bit of Cloudflare, uh, Quick Cloud, which is Lightspeed Web Server subsidiary for, yeah, caching, CDN, image optimization, video optimization, and blah, 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 blah. All I heard was blah, 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 blah. Yeah. If you want technical speak, you speak to me. <laughs> if you want layman speak, you speak to her. It's not an insult. She's got her mouth wide open for the... No, it's like where you're like my car and I'm like this piece of metal that's framed and stamped this way and has this blah, size blah, engine blah, and blah, these blah, size blah, wheels blah, and this blah. kind of transmission. Like I go into the details and you know the, and then when it comes to insurance and baking, we're the opposite. Okay. I know what flour is. I don't know what the difference between the different kinds of flowers mm -hmm. are. Flower. Okay. See, good analogy, right? I'm the best at rambling off analogies that don't make sense until I find one that makes sense. Okay. So you'll get six or seven analogies before I see the light bulb and somebody and I'm like, okay, that's the analogy that I use from now on. <laughs> um, did I already say our names? Yes. Did I say your website? Nofhelps.com? Yes. Okay. LeeMaxMedia.com? Yes. <laughs> There's nothing on my website but a contact form right now because I'm 
redeveloping it. It's going to take me a little while because I'm doing stuff like this. You've been redeveloping it for over two years. No, I've been redeveloping it since the day it started, but right now it's more in a passive mode where everybody's restricted to just that specific landing page, redirected to the landing page. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you would like to sponsor this podcast, mm. visit he's wrong, she's right com. There is a form on there, or there will be if it's not there yet. Uh, <laughs> I like to speak about things before I get them done, but it does light the fire under my own ass because then I'm like, shit, I need to get this done. Otherwise, I'm going to miss an opportunity. So visit he's wrong, she's right com. There are contact forms where you can just general contact us. There will be contact forms for potential sponsors uh, where you can peddle your wares to us. Uh, be aware though, that I am not a shill though. People might tell you I am, um, we will require that, you know, we have the right amount of time to research, see what other people are saying about your product or service. That way we can ensure that we're looking at it from a holistic perspective that tells us, okay. You know, are these people just being assholes on the internet, leaving poor reviews, or is this really a problem? And then subsequent to that, have they fixed it? Like, are you sending it to us to say, oh, yeah, you know, they've they've fixed those problems and complications, so why don't you guys give it a second shot? Um, Just because you send us something does not mean we're going to talk about it. There will obviously have to be contracts. I'm just trying to be clear and transparent with you guys. So... I'm very meticulous about this stuff. We're not going to talk about your thing unless it's something that we will actually choose. VPN companies, if you're watching this right now, you can get fucked. I'm not going to shill any of your VPNs. Um, Yeah, that's that. No one's just staring at me for those that are wondering what's going on over here. And I apologize. I have hay fever right now. It is um, pollen fucking destroy everybody's life season in North Carolina and probably the majority of the South at this point um, here in coastal North Carolina. It's heavy. My I have a red truck and right now it is not red. It is yellow. I have powder coated my vehicle <laughs> with pollen. Um, yeah. So moving on, let's get into the show, Nona. Okay, let's get to it. You have to talk like a big girl. Uh, that's hard for me. You're literally the loudest person in the room when there's not a microphone. It's not you. true at it's all. It's absolutely true. It's not true at all. It's absolutely Only true. Only when I'm passionate about something. Or when you're drinking and having fun with your friends. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> or, or talking bad about me. I don't know what you're talking about. She actually doesn't do that. She only ever talks good about me. She lies about me a lot. She tells people so many nice things that are completely fabricated. He is so nice. <laughs> he is so caring. He is so affectionate. If you watched episode one, spe- specifying watch, um, I have made some adjustments to some settings. I've reduced the ingest quality of the cameras because I did see one glitch. I didn't watch the entire video through yet, obviously, because it was an hour and one minute, 53 seconds long. Um, but I hope that the adjustments both to the video and audio are better. If they're not, go ahead and uh, tell us how we suck below. That's what she said. (laughs) The next time say it. Um, otherwise, let's jump right into it. You got some topics for us? Dating. Why don't you give us all a rundown of topics so they can yeah. keep us in check if we don't hit them all. Dating. Teenagers and specifically teenagers sneaking around. Didn't we already talk about that in episode one? A little bit. So what do we have to add to that conversation? Mm. Well, I... Threw a little wrench in your plan there, didn't yeah, I? <laughs> I? I already wrote these out before we even did the first episode. That's why the checklist is a nice guideline, but it's not something to strictly adhere to. And high school and college, which we also touched a little bit on the first episode. Mm. Not really. What did, What specifically do you want to talk about? The, 
Like the differences where it gets applied to you? Or like mm -hmm. what you, mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Go? Putting yeah. me on the spot here. Okay, so I wanted to circle back to dating. And we talked a little bit about what age is the right age for having sex when you're a teenager. I think 12 is too young. That's my personal opinion. I already gave kind of my rough approximations for Chloe and Cooper, but dating, dating without sex. That's a thing. Oh my God. I meant dating. What is the dating age before sex is even part of the equation? I'm not talking about adults. I'm talking about you know what I think we should do. Maybe after I get this clusterfuck of a setup figured out, we actually need like a monitor. Maybe oh well, for I for, won't be able to see anything past those lights that are blinding. For those for those familiar with my day to day antics, you'll be pleased to know that the ladder plays a supporting role in this podcast. <laughs> He's our uh, behind the scenes. Um, Do you say he? Line. Yeah, it, she, they. It is an it. It has no anim anatomical features at all. It, it is not. It is not <laughs> male or female. It is plastic and metal. Okay. Do you know what kind of plastic? I don't know, and I'm sure you're going to school me on it. No, I was just going to say because. Never mind. I didn't say anything. <laughs> what? Not you. Some women. My goodness. Pumped full with it. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> As she looks down at her yeah. cleavage. Right. I, I figured that's what you were getting at. No. Well, what else would it be? I don't know. Now they're going to be asking in the comments. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What do you mean? Nobody will know. Pumped nobody, full of plastic. Nobody will know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, the point of that is you and the ladder are in oh, a relationship the, no, no, together. No. <laughs> no. Um, we need a monitor so I can put up, like, so that we can pull up what we're talking about, but in Reddit so you can see what. Oh, gosh. What other people are <laughs> asking. Okay. It's kind of hard to do with our... I, mean, I went, only went on Reddit that one time in the last episode, so I don't know how crazy it gets. I guess in theory I could use that little piece for the light, put it on here, put my laptop in the middle, since you don't want to use your laptop anymore. It's, I can't even see it past the microphone. All I can see is the microphone. Okay. See how I've kind of adjusted this a little bit, so it's less in our faces. Well, you say that I talk too quietly, so I have to have it up by my face. In general, you want that because we want the gain to be down as low as possible so that there's not ambient noise. Are they going to hear birds chirping? Who knows? Are they going to hear cars honking? Who knows? What about my stomach growling? Can you guys hear that? Who knows? Comment below if you can. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's go back to talking about schools. Okay. What do you want to talk about about schools? Okay. So we have specialty schools here in Wilmington, North Carolina that you can apply to um, as an eighth grader going into ninth grade. And big girl voice. I am using my big girl voice. Mm. <clears throat> when you are in eighth grade, you can apply to go to specialty high schools. I went to one specialty program within a high school, which is now its own school that you can apply to. It didn't used to be when I was in high school, but it was within the high school. And so I did do that. And what about you? I went to a public school that had tie-ins with Purdue, IU, and I think... Maybe one other, maybe one of the tech schools. It, it, obviously, it always changes, but 
Um, so I did uh, drafting in AutoCAD with the intent, in high school at least. Uh, so my dad owned a commercial industrial construction company in Northern Indiana, for those that did not know that. Um, built factories, warehouses, schools, stores, basically everything non-residential. And what would you say your high school or high school area were ranked at in, for the entire state? Oh, for the state? Um, probably top five, top ten, pretty much everything. And what about for the United States as a whole? I think at one point they were in the top 25 for public education. Do you think it's higher than that now? I have no idea. Well, we're down in pretty close to the bottom 50. And I'm, no, but I'm talking about school specifically, not state. I don't know what the, the state, I think, is pretty high up there. Indiana's pretty good education-wise. It's just the inner city schools that are pretty trash, but that applies pretty much everywhere. Probably. But like the suburbs of Indianapolis, those schools are pretty good. Like War, uh, Ben Davis is one of them. That we, War, uh, Warren Central. Basically, if you're a good football school in Indiana, you're probably also good in education, which is not something that most people would think. But in order to be good at football, you have to have a big school. So you have a, a large enough population that you can offset the poor academics with good academics, typically. And Wilmington is not known for either. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah. There's only like two or three states in the South that are known for any sport other than Florida. basketball. Yeah, Florida and Texas. Florida, Texas. You, and... you consider Texas to be the South? No, no, no. I'm saying schools as far as like football plus education. Well, you said in the South. Texas is kind of in the South. I, what, would, I wouldn't your, call it the South. Your definition of the South is Civil War definition. But I would, pre I would basically consider anything that touches the Gulf and the most of the Atlantic from Virginia down is pretty much the South. I, Texas is in. Is Kentucky the South or the Midwest? Ooh, that's a tough one. That one kind of flip flops for me. It is in the middle of the United States, so technically. I don't think it's considered part of the Midwest. I think it's yeah. considered part of the South. Tennessee is definitely South. Tennessee, I agree with that. Kentucky, it's kind of, it's hard, but I would not consider Texas to be the South. And what's crazy is where I grew up, and then state line of Indiana and Michigan is the same driving distance and probably within a few miles uh, equally to like us driving to Charlotte from here. Mm -hmm. That's going from South Bend to Louisville is the same distance for us as going east to west to Charlotte. And so you can go from deep in the Midwest to the south in four hours. Okay. So I always consider it part of the Midwest, but I think that it's technically part of the south. It's in the middle of the United States, no man's land. It's the fried chicken. You ever seen that where people colored in the, um, was it Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois? Um, nope, you're teaching me so much. Oh. Much education over here. Basically, Mississippi is the foot, or no, Louisiana is the, is that backwards? Which way does Louisiana face? <laughs> anyway, so the, the picture the picture is like Tennessee is the frying pan and those vertical states right there are the chef and then Kentucky looks like a piece of chicken in the frying pan. Okay. Good to know. Hold on. Now, I gotta now show you. you're going to really school me. Yeah. Keep talking. Talking. She's afraid of the microphone. I think I've said that before. There yes. you go. Terrified. Oh my goodness. What an adorable little man. <laughs> so Wisconsin's not involved. Minnesota, Iowa, Arkansas, um, Missouri, and Louisiana. 
with Tennessee as the thing. For those of you who are watching, <laughs> you knew what I was talking about. Sorry for all the lights. There's lights and lights and lights and lights. Um, <laughs> we're going to officially declare right now, Kentucky is part of the South. I don't know that I agree with that. I've already stated that. I've declared it. Okay. Whatever you say, apparently. <laughs> Wherever you are from, dear listener. Do you consider Kentucky to be part of the South or the middle of America? I was going back to the um, asking about their education system. Oh. It's a big trend. People. Where do you rank? People pulling themselves or pulling their kids out of school and... Uh, Funding, starting, applying to these different niche private academies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I've always stated that... Or homeschooling. My, my children would be in private school if I could afford it. Homeschool if I didn't have to work. Our old house, for the handful of you that have ever been there, in the cul-de-sac alone, almost every household... Every household had kids, but almost every household went to a different school. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors that are a teacher, mm -hmm. their kids went to the districted public schools. Mm -hmm. Ours go to charter school and went to charter school at that point too. Mm -hmm. The neighbors on the other side, immediate, this is just immediate neighbors all within private the whole Private school yeah. with private education. Christian Catholic. It's a, it's Catholic. a Catholic academy. Mm -hmm. The neighbors next to them, they have a special needs kid and their daughter goes to public school. Mm -hmm. That's correct. The neighbors next to them used to go to charter school. The two oldest now go to public school and the youngest is homeschooled. homeschooled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The neighbors next to them, not sure. They were renters. And then the neighbors next to them, their kids were not old enough yet. They might... Just be going to school this year. Yeah, or they, next were, year. they were still in daycare. So yeah, if if just in one cul-de-sac you're fragmented that much, you know your areas probably have a problem. Mm -hmm. That being said, the area that we used to live in is very young, um, as far as the actual developments themselves, like the housing. Pretty much all of the actual housing developments neighborhoods. Um, subdivisions, stuff like that, have been built within the last 20 years, roughly. And the schools, in general, haven't kept up. So, but now they're trying to hike their <laughs> property taxes. What By almost 70%. Yeah. So. For a town that was created in 1989, their property taxes have astronomically gone up in the last four years alone. Yeah, I've owned I've owned a house in the neighborhood for coming on coming up six years. We were annexed into the town. So I have my address works in both. Um we were annexed in shortly after I bought the house. So we were getting the fire department changed. It was originally a county and then became town of Leland. Um I don't know if they've done anything with redistricting or anything like that. That may that there's essentially there's four neighborhoods over there, four core neighborhoods. You got Mallory Creek, Brunswick Forest, Waterford, and Magnolia Greens. That's correct. And then you got people farther down um, in other newer developments. Mm -hmm. Essentially, like there's this is a town that has. If you stripped away the neighborhoods. It'd be the stereotypical one stop sign, nothing else. Um, there's a Walmart that's the largest yeah. store there. And well, they open a Lowe's now. Okay, it's a mini Lowe's. Yeah. But, but it's nice because it's new. Okay, that's fine. But I'm just trying to give the listeners a understanding as to the size of the town. It, it boomed in the last uh, couple of years. It boomed like... 15,000 residents, the county, not just the town. It was 15,000 residents in like two years with an expectation of another 10,000 this year. But that's also because Wilmington was the number one place 
that people were moving to during COVID because everybody could work remotely and Wilmington was number one. And there's no jobs here for any of them. That is correct. But some of these people were coming with jobs that they were able to work exclusively remote, whether that is continued or not. And now they're searching out. It's pretty much everybody's pretty much mandated back to yes. office in some form. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Even my former employer. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, that was part of the reason. They wanted me to commute two hours. They hired me when I would never even looked in the area. And then they wanted me to commute two hours each direction, multiple times a week, not pay lodging, not pay fuel. Get fucked. Um, Get that's fucked. my philosophy. Words to live by. Um, but I've got other things that I can fall back on. My business had still existed. It atrophied a little bit during that time because I focused on my core big clients and let all the other ones just kind of flake off. But also means less headaches because... The big clients are willing to pay when they ask for something. When the small ones want to reverse nickel and dime you, if that's a thing. Explain. Well, they want everything for free. Reverse three, th three. nickel and diming equals free? Like if I itemized what I was billing for, for like service after the fact. Mm -hmm. Like if they're like, hey, I need to do this, this, and this, I need to update things. And then I, if I were to itemize that bill, they'd be like, oh, do I really need this? Do I really need that? Why isn't this included? It was included four years ago. Why isn't it included now? Well, because four years ago it was free. It was free to me. I'm not going to charge you for it, so I didn't charge you for it. Kind of learning a lesson about that. So not only has the cost of living gone up, taxes have gone up, but bills to actually run mm -hmm. your business have yep. dramatically gone up. Yep. How much would you say that they've gone up? To run my business? Mm -hmm. Um, just from say 2020 compared to now 2024 so the core of it hasn't fortunately like gcp hasn't infrastructure costs have not gone up software costs have gone up to an outsider like myself the internet connection and the server virtual server hardware dedicated server hardware that stuff has basically stayed the same because my do you expect it to go up you always have to upgrade things eventually just like any other computer okay. so but for the things that have gone up the things that have gone up have just been it's always been software and it's been you'd say like every month every other month they keep creeping up yep yep there's always a reason and when one does it because they're all interconnected and intertwined for example, a lot of people use Salesforce. Companies whose software I buy use Salesforce, not that I use it, but if Salesforce goes up for them, they increase the price of their product or service. So I have to increase the price of my product or service based on two other two or three, you know, upstream chains. Up yeah, upstream. I don't know why I thought I would end it then. Chewing on those things fucked me up. Yeah. But a lot of stuff that I use technology-wise um, might have, like one core service might have been like an early adopter for it and I needed that specific feature so I used their service. But then the bigger service providers also started adding in those features so I didn't have to be as reliant on this one. So... Basically, my entire business is always dynamic. There's, I could not set my business for a year and forget it in any aspect. I always have to be learning something. I always have to be trying something. I always have to be spinning up some environment to test something out to see how that would work for somebody. An offering over here that might have been free now has a paid tier. An offering that was a paid tier doesn't happen very frequently, either gets absorbed into something else or becomes free. Um, examples of stuff like that that would be relatable is like texting and calling. Remember when we used to have to actually pay for minutes? And now oh, man, 25 cents a text. Nope. Do you remember? And they would send you a K. And you're like, 25 cents for K? No, I don't think so. Goodbye. Yeah. So 
we, you know, all, basically everything is always changing. What I use this year might change next year. Underlying technology is probably going to stay the same because there's inter, you know, um, inter organization um, competition. They all effectively do the same thing. Google Cloud, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, IBM. They, effectively, they all offer the same things. Which one you use, it basically comes down to price and preference. What is your favorite? Well, I'm Google Cloud Partner, so it's the only one that I use. I love how you say it like somebody has a knife to your back. I actually, so um, Federal Wiki uses DigitalOcean. But DigitalOcean is a, like on my phone, uh, Google Fi is an MVNO. It's a, it's a virtual network that uses T-Mobile and Verizon's towers. I'm basically using their backbone, but I pay less money. Okay. That's effectively what DigitalOcean is in the IT space. They, they aggregate. Did it have a special promotion for... 501c nonprofits. They might, but that wasn't why. It was because the uh, uh, software developer has tight integrations with it, and I didn't want to have to do more than I had to when I'm coming out of pocket for it. So, speaking of, if you would like to donate to Veteran Wiki, Andrew will let you know how to do that. Use your big girl voice so they can hear you. I am using my big girl voice. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm louder turning and facing you than you are talking directly in the microphone. <laughs> and apologize for the uh, coughing. You've already said that about four times. I know, but I'm saying it again. Somebody might have joined the episode midway through the episode. They might have been like, you know what? The beginning's probably boring. I'm going to join right at this moment. Okay. And I'm going to be coughing. And now yeah, you're scaring them away. So if you are trying to turn this off, go ahead and keep listening. The beatings will continue until you pay us. The beatings. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, why did we start this podcast, Nona? I don't know, Andrew. Why did you start this podcast? This was your brainchild. How was it my brainchild? You approached me. You were like, hey, let's let's do a podcast. Let's I did not. Podcast. We want to air people's dirt, is what you said. No, she didn't actually say I that. I did but. not say that. <laughs> but that's what you wanted to do. I don't know what you're talking about. Nona is a huge consumer of things like housewives and okay. screaming rich people being dumb for no reason. I don't think consumer is the right term for it. You're invested. It's, it's a background noise. You're totally invested. You know these people's lives. You know their names. Anytime I'm ever like, what the fuck? You're like, <laughs> oh, it's because she did this and blah, blah, blah. And somebody had a recording of this. And it was, but it wasn't a real thing. But they're going to say that you know all the but details. But there are people who are actually invested and actually follow these people, whether it's on social media or otherwise. I, it's on background on the TV, binge watching you watch while it. I'm working. It is, it is background. It, I am not invested if they the were, way that you are implying. If that they I were am, here in town doing something, I would not seek them out. I have never sought out any actors or otherwise and this is a filming town but if they were doing like an event like a i would not meet go. and greet fan event i would not go i don't care okay. okay do not care okay i certainly would not spend money on it okay remains to be seen okay <laughs> If any of you weird rich people wants to, wants to give me a free ticket to BravoCon and pay for the flight and lodging, then I would maybe consider going as it was all expenses paid. What's, I would never pay for that. What's BravoCon? Look it up. I don't want to look it up. I feel like you're telling me to look up some 
<laughs> Weird. It's just this convention with all the housewives and other people on Bravo, and that's all. I know it exists. I have never been interested in buying a ticket. Where is it? I have no idea. I assume a major city, whether it's Atlanta or New York. Have any of your friends gone? I have no idea. Okay. Okay. I don't know. What about you? If one of your uh, podcast people or YouTube people that you follow incessantly were here in town, would you go see them? You know, the answer is no. How do I know that? Because you're banned and not allowed to go see them? No, what do you always say? Andrew doesn't like... Leaving the house. Crowds. Leaving the house. Crowds. Leaving the house. Why is leaving the house involved? <laughs> Crowds. No, I'm not one of those fucking dumb, dysfunctional veterans that can't... Don't physic- say it like that. No, the, the ones that literally walk around claiming, oh, I'm a dysfunctional veteran. They're dumb. They're dumb. It's the veteran cry for help, cry for attention. I'm dysfunctional. I can't re-acclimate with society. I can't function. They know it. Do you consider yourself to be a functional human? Yeah. Okay. And if I wasn't, I wouldn't walk around claiming that I wasn't. That's the point. Okay. Okay. I equate it to walking around telling people that you have ED. Oh my god! <laughs> How many people do you think are just going to walk around and say, I have erectile dysfunction, I can't get it up for my wife? Uh. Like, you don't, you don't walk around talking about yourself like that. Okay. It's not funny. Nobody, like, if you have some sort of issue, go seek help. Talking about it like you're proud that you're dysfunctional because you served for two or four or six years and now suddenly the 20 years prior and X amount of years after before your death, you weren't able to become just a normal functioning member of society. That's a you problem, not a society problem. Tell us how you really feel. I just did. I know. Go get help. Nobody wants to pity you at all. Sure, there are people with actual PTSD. There are people that have actual issues. But for a a massive group of the veteran population to run around acting like we're fucking psychopaths doesn't do anything to help any other veteran's case. It makes all of us look bad. Psychopaths? When, when a vocal portion of the uh, demographic starts running around saying, I'm dysfunctional, I'm dysfunctional. And then that's what people see because the normal people don't walk around saying, I'm functional. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it's the same thing as going around saying that you have ED or some other issue and if you have those issues you know keep those issues within the people that it matters to your care providers your family members get the treatment get support go to whatever applicable support network system that you need to go to but don't plaster it on your social media with all these stupid red flag laws and things like that that are going on all you're doing is essentially giving them another piece to latch on to. If you do something stupid, even if it's on accident, they're going to go and come through everything in your life. By you going out and proclaiming that you have a problem and you never seek out help, you're only hurting your case. 
to advocate for yourself, you have to advocate for yourself. Running around telling people that you have a problem and not getting it addressed doesn't help anybody. Go to therapy. You heard her. Go to therapy. I do. Go more. But I also don't have these problems. Don't look at me like that. <clears throat> There's going to be some people pissed off in the comments. I'm aware. And I don't you care. You piss everybody off. Yeah. Just seriously, not saying that you need to be medicated. Not saying that you need to do any of that kind of stuff. But why do we lose focus? There we go. Both in context. And for those that are watching video, they'll be like, oh, yeah. But people watching audio will be like, this guy's just all over the place. I did take my medicine, my Adderall, or my real one, my Adderall. No, I don't have Adderall anymore. You are? Well, I'm not prescribed it anymore. I still have my part of my last prescription that my provider said that I can take as needed, but I have not renewed or refilled that prescription. Gotcha. Because I control my drug plans, care plans. Because I advocate for myself and they know that I have an understanding and they know my education background and history and my MOS in the military and everything like that. So when I go in there and I'm like, hey, this isn't working anymore. I'd like to switch. They don't think that I'm a drug seeker because I'm not drug seeking. That's why they, that's why, I, oh, there goes the light. Hopefully that doesn't ruin anything. Looks like the next one. Yep. <laughs> So if the lighting got worse, I'm sorry. Um, battery powered, then two of them are down now. The other two should be good. He says. I don't know, it got really dark. All the shadows. No, we look good on the screen still. Um, talking about care plans, providers. You are your own advocate. Yeah. Basically, the VA is just the gatekeeper of my health. And everything else. And everything else. Would you like to tell them? Oh, I was saying that because I, I get drug tested to make sure that I am taking my medicine. Yeah. Would I like to tell them what? About your disability. Disability rating. And fighting for yourself in that regard. Oh. Yeah, that's fun. Don't use any of those stupid services that you have to pay for that they want to cut. There literally are people... That can and will do it for free. Um, I think even the even the DAV is free, or at least they'll get assigned to you. Whether or not they do a good job or not, I don't know. But um, I happen to know people at the VA, so I'm like, hey, I need to file and fix this, and they're like, okay, this is the form you need. Do it by this, mail it here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is part of what we're working on with Veteran Wiki. This information will be available. Um, those people are board members, advisory board members, volunteers for Veteran Wiki, and they are building out that information for this purpose so that we can say, hey, go, go here, check it out, search, whatever. It'll be outlined each step. Um, one of our goals eventually for the organization is for the VA to maintain it for us. Um, having the resources there and available that are easily searchable, links directly to it, no nonsense, no bullshit, um, you know, find what you're looking for. Because not necessarily everything goes directly through the VA. There are third parties that have to process things and uh, they're contractors for various different things. Like all of my claim stuff has always had to go through various different contractors for better or worse. You know, they don't get paid a lot to do it. I remember talking with the uh, provider that did my initial packet in 2010, 11. Yeah, after I got out. Because um, at that time, it took 22 months to get a rating, and I was fast-tracked. Because I started my packet s seven months before I got out. And it still took 22 months after I got out to get my rating. Um, but he said that at the time... 
they paid a hundred dollar flat rate just for the exam visit and checking the boxes to a doctor that's pretty much nothing they can't even open the doors for a hundred dollars but that's what the va or dod or whoever dfas somebody is paying these people the bare minimum with obviously in the provider they're probably getting other potential incentives you know further contracts with the department of defense or the va probably retaining people that would have never otherwise found their practice so there are other benefits to doing something like that but there's no guarantee it's not like like where i had to go to get my packet put together was in gary indiana I'm not driving to the doctor's office from South Bend to Gary, Indiana. I don't want to be in Gary, Indiana for any reason. <laughs> Definitely not going to drive there for a doctor's appointment two hours away. So, yeah. But everything changes. The VA um, clinic in South Bend was run by Humana. It wasn't even run by the VA. I thought it was excellent. The ones that are directly part of the VA network, people often have problems with and have to go get third party opinions and specialties and pay out of pocket. And there was a big issue for a long time where they had a, a program where, because the backlog was so long, you could go almost anywhere you wanted and the VA would pay for it. But then there's also predatory billing and yeah. So if you've dealt with attempting to increase your VA rating, leave that in the comments. Or just file any claim at all. Okay, or that. Yeah. I just realized I ran out of water. It's a very unfortunate time to be alive. Unfortunate. <laughs> I have one right there, but I don't want to move. It's too far away. I don't want to bump the setup. I might mess something up. Yeah. Um... Yeah. We are looking for sponsors. I have not seeked any out yet. Um, sought. Seek, sought. 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 Sought them out yet. Who's right? <laughs> he has not sought out sponsors. Not seeked. Okay. Please say so. I do say so. All right. We'll go with what you said. Because you're right or wrong. Correct. Um, yeah, if you want something on this beautiful wall right here, mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. Yeah, it's nice and blank, so you can put up all of your information. Or if you just want to buy us better equipment, sponsor okay. some equipment purchases, that'll, that'll be helpful. We would, we would like that, especially a better microphone so that way I can talk in my normal decibel, not have Andrew it's yell not at me. It's not a microphone problem, it's a you being afraid of the microphone problem. Not afraid. Yes, you are. You're very afraid. You're scared to death. <sighs> Quivering. But now we know that those batteries only last about two hours. Now we know. Anything else you would like to talk about here in this amazing episode two of nothing? The episode two of nothing. No. I think we're good. How many minutes? 53. Call it good enough? No, nah, let's sneak one more thing in here real quick. Let's do a little, let's do a little speed run. Let's do a little little Q&A speed run. How about that? Okay. Let's introduce something something new here. As if we've been doing this for a long time. Oh, yeah. So long. Um, what's your favorite color? Aqua. What's your favorite color? Really boring. Green. I thought I was supposed to just ask the same thing back. No, oh. ask a new question. Oh, okay. All right. Go. Yeah. What's your favorite animal? Um, I guess dog. My dog specifically. <laughs> um, What's your dream vacation destination? Hawaii. What's the last four of social security number? I'm not telling you that. One, 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 one. There you go. So I'm trying to I'm trying to pull out questions to be able to crack your password. 
Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs> do you want to get into my phone? It's right here. No. Okay. I can do that easily. Okay. Um. Who's your favorite sports team, Andrew? National champion, University of Michigan Wolverines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's your favorite sport, Andrew? Football. I had no idea. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Hmm. Filet mignon wrapped in bacon. Bacon being number one. I'm trying to stay within camera. Bacon, bacon wrapped filet mignon, pretty much everything else. Sausage is below the floor. Sausage is below the floor. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a shout out to Justin Meather from Black Rifle Coffee. It's a story for another episode. Story for another episode. Check right. out check out the Bacon Group on Facebook. Nice little plug. Yeah, it's got like 500, 500 members. I thought you said it's mainly, mainly spammers now. No, we filter those out pretty well. Sausage got taken over by spammers. Oh. Yeah, Justin lost the war. Oh, yeah? He had to shut it down? I don't think he shut it down. He just let it do its own thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It all started with a post. I just said bacon. And here we are three years later with all this content floating around the internet of bacon versus sausage. Is that the proudest moment of your entire life? Mm, no. You had to think about that a little too long. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. I think bacon is superior to that ring on your finger in your head. No. Okay. Whatever no. you say. No. It's not. It is. No. It's really close. Mm-hmm. Like, we're talking like, for the audio audience, I'm doing a lot of hand gestures. You should just go watch the episodes. You know, help us get to that 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. And he'll wear my dress, just as a reminder. On a live stream. On a live stream. And Justin has done that recently. Oh, yeah? Well, he wore that costume of yours. I thought we were going to talk about that on another episode, but sure. Oh, well, no, we'll talk about We'll leave that. That'll be a cliffhanger. Okay. Why did Justin Meather wear Nona's clothes? <laughs> he was beautiful, by the way. <laughs> and nobody else will ever see it. I still have the pictures. I still have the pictures. Now I'll share them. Bummer. He asked um, very nicely not to do that. Or did he? Why don't you guys go bug him? Check out Spearhead on Facebook. Spearhead by Black Rifle Coffee Company. It's a, it's a great community. It's a place that you should go. And you should answer the questions that Andrew Limax sent you. <laughs> just don't even don't even answer the actual questions because they'll know they'll know just say Andrew Lemax sent me and you can even say from the podcast good luck yeah all right anyways for... see you all next time wow she's she's taking control guys maybe she's not afraid of the microphone anymore goodbye bye bye <laughs>